Hello everyone, welcome to a new lecture. In this video, we are going to talk about the shortest path problem. And basically, the idea of the shortest path problem is finding a path between two vertices such that the sum of the weights of the edges in the path is minimum. This problem is very famous in graph theory. Also, it's famous in computer science, in transportation, and communication. I bet you have come across this. When you calculate the path between, for example, two cities, you want to find the shortest path between those two cities using different roads. And basically, when you use a GPS, it uses an algorithm to calculate the shortest path between two points. And that is basically the shortest path problem. It is finding a path between two vertices such that the sum of the weights of the edges in the path is minimum. So let me give you an example. Let's say we have a graph like this as you can see it. Here we have a weighted graph. I have assigned a value to each edge. So for example, the edge that connects C to B is weighted 3, the edge that connects C to D is weighted 4, and so forth. The vertices here can represent cities, and the weights, for example, can represent time between each city taking that particular road, or distance between those two cities taking that particular road. And let's say I want to find the path between these two vertices, C and G, meaning I want to find a path such that when I sum the weights of the edges, I get the minimum number. So I can go like this, for example. If I go like this, the sum of the edges will be 4 plus 4, 8 plus 1, it will be 9. If I go like this, for example, it will be 3 plus 2, 5, 5 plus 4, 9, 9 plus 1 is 10. Or I can go like this. I can go from C to A to B to D to E to G. As you can see in this particular path, the total sum of the weights of the edges in the path will be 2 plus 1, 3, 3 plus 2, 5, 5 plus 4, 9, 9 plus 1, is 10. So between all the paths that I've taken to go from C to G, this path is the shortest because the sum of the edges will be 9 and the rest of the path that I took have the total sum of 10. Therefore, the shortest path between C to G is a path that goes from C to D to E to G and that is basically the idea of the shortest path problem. We have several types of shortest path problems. We have single pair shortest path problem. We have single source shortest path problem. We have single destination shortest path problem. And we have all pairs shortest path problem. The single pair shortest path problem is finding a path between a single pair of vertices. So let's say this is our graph. A single pair shortest path problem will be finding the shortest path between C and F or between a and G. Basically, you take a single pair of vertices or points and you will find the shortest path between them. However, single source shortest path problem is pinpointing a vertex to be your source and then finding the shortest path from your source to all the other vertices. So here our source is C. I'll find the shortest path between C and A, C and B, C and D, C and E, C and F, and C and G. So the paths in the single source shortest path problem will originate from the source and it will head to the rest of the vertices. Then we have single destination shortest path problem, which is opposite to the single source shortest path problem. And basically here you will have a destination, for example, let's say C, and then you'll find the shortest path from all the other vertices to C. In single source shortest path problem, we found the shortest path from the source to the rest of the vertices. However, in single destination shortest path problem, we find the shortest path from the rest of the vertices to our destination. Here, our destination is C. So the path in single destination shortest path problem will originate from the other vertices to your destination. In our case, is C. Finally, we have all pair shortest path problem, which is finding the shortest path between all the vertices. So let's say I'll find the shortest path between A and C, A and B, A and D, A and E, A and F, A and G. Then I'll find the shortest path between B and C, B and A, B and D, B and E, B and F, B and G. Then I'll find the shortest path between D and B, D and C, D and A, D and E, D and F, and D and G, and so forth, until I find the shortest path between all my vertices. We we have single pair shortest path problem which is finding the shortest path between a single pair of vertices. We have single source shortest path problem which is dedicating a vertex to be your source and then you will find the shortest path from your source to all the other vertices. We have single destination shortest path problem which is finding the shortest path from all the vertices to one single destination. And finally we have all pairs shortest path problem which is finding the shortest path between 
all your vertices. So now we know the types of shortest path problems. What are some of the ways or algorithms that we can find a shortest path in a graph? Well, we have a couple of algorithms. We have Dixter's algorithm. We have Bellman Ford algorithm. We have a star search algorithm, we have Floyd Warshall algorithm, and we have Johnson's algorithm, such that all of these are used in order to find the shortest path in a graph. We will talk about Dijkstra's algorithm and we will see how it is used in order to find the shortest path in a graph. So let me give an example on Dijkstra's algorithm. Let's say we have a graph like this, as you can see it. We have two, four, six vertices. I have assigned a value to each edge and I'm trying to find the shortest path between E and F using Dijkstra's algorithm. So how does Dijkstra's algorithm work? Well, what I do in order to find the shortest path using Dijkstra's algorithm is I will assign values to each vertex. I will assign value 0 to my initial vertex and I will give infinity to the rest of the vertices. So here E has the value of 0 and A, C, D, B and F, all of them have value of infinity. Initially, that's what I do. Then what I do is I'll create two sets. One of them is called an visited set. And at the beginning, it contains all my vertices. And one of them is called visited set. And initially, it does not contain any vertices. As I move along in finding the shortest path between E and F, and visited set will decrease one by one and visited set will increase one by one until I reach the end where the unvisited set does not contain anything and the visited set contains all my vertices. After I do this, what I do is I will look at the vertices that are connected to my initial vertex. In this case, the vertices that are connected to vertex E are C and A. What I do is I will look at the value of A and C and see if their value is greater than the value of the edges that connect A and C to E. So in this case, the value of A is infinity. The value of the edge that connects A to E is 3. Infinity is greater than 3. And in this case, infinity is greater than 1. When I have the value of a vertex greater than the edge or the sum of the edges that they connect my initial vertex to that particular vertex, I will change the value of that particular vertex to the sum of the edges that connects my initial vertex to that particular vertex. So here the value of A and C will change from infinity to one of them having value of 3 and the other one having the value of 1. After I decrease the value of the vertices that are connected to my initial vertex, I will mark my initial vertex as visited. So E comes from unvisited set to visited set. And then I'll go to the vertex that has the smallest value. In this case, I have to go to C. And then I will repeat the same step. We will look at the vertices that are connected to C. In this case, they are A, B, and D. And then we will change their values. So we will change their values based on whether the current value that they have are greater than the sum of the edges that connect the initial vertex to that particular vertex. So here, the initial vertex are E, and E is connected to B through C. The value of B is infinity, and the sum of the edges that connect E to B through C are 1 plus 3, which is 4. 4 is less than infinity. We will change the value of B from infinity to the value of the sum of the edges that connect E to B through C. So in this case, the value of B will be 4, the value of D will be 5, and the value of A will turn from 3 to 2. This is what happens. You may wonder why the value of A changed from 3 to 2. Well, the initial value of A was infinity, and then it became 3. Since A is connected to C, and there's a shorter path from E to A, which is through C, that will give the value of A to 2 instead of 3. So if you go directly from E to A, you'll have the value of A to be 3. However, if you go from E to C to A, a, you'll have the value of A to be 2. Since that is the case, we will change the value of A from 3 to 2. And the rule is when the current value of a vertex is greater than the value of the sum of the edges that connects that particular vertex to the initial vertex through a vertex, then you will change the value of that particular vertex to the new value. In this case, we change the value of A to 2 from 3. And then the value of B is 4 and the value of D is 5. Once we determine the values of the vertices that are connected to C, we will mark vertex C as visited 
and then we will go to the vertex that has the smallest value in this case it is a okay so now we will look at the vertices that are connected to a and the only vertex that is connected to a that is unvisited is b so we will go to b however if you notice the value of b has to change because the sum of the edges that connects my initial vertex which is e to b through the visited vertices is 3 because 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3 3 is less than the current value of b which is 4 therefore i have to change the value of b to 4 and that is what i exactly do and then i'll go to b and as you can see i have marked a as a visited set and then i'll look at the vertices that are connected to b in this case they are c d and f and i'll try to change their values however since c is in the visited set i'm not going to try to change its value i'm just going to try to change the value of d and f the value of f definitely going to change however i don't know if i have to change the value of d and changing the value of d depends on whether the value of the edges that connects vertex d to e through the visited set is less than the value of d if it is less than that then i'll change the value of d to the new value however let's see if that is the case well here we have one plus one two plus one three plus 2 is 5 since 5 is equal to 5 I'm not going to change the value of D however I have to change the value of F from infinity to 10 since the sum of the edges that connects E to F through the visited set is 10 1 plus 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 7 is 10 once I do that I'll put B from the unvisited set to the visited set and then I'll go to the vertex that is connected to B and is not in the visited set and has the smallest value in that case it is D I'll go to D and then I don't have an option I have to go to F in that case once I go to F I'll mark F to be in the visited set and now since as you can see it I don't have any elements in the unvisited set and all my vertices are in the visited set now I have found the shortest path and I have to keep in mind to change the value of F from 10 to 9 because some of the edges that connects E to F from the visited set equals 9 instead of 10 1 plus 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 2 is 5 plus 4 is 9 if I go from B to F directly I'll have the value of 10 if I go from B to F through D I'll have the value of 9 and this is the shortest path from E to F you have to go from E to C to A to B to D to F so just to repeat it how do you find the shortest path between E and F using Dijkstra's algorithm well you will give your initial vertex value 0 and you'll give infinity to the rest of the vertices once you do that you'll create two sets one of them called unvisited set and the other one called visited set you'll put all your vertices in the unvisited set and you will try to reach a point where you don't have any vertices in the unvisited set all of them have been transferred to the visited set once you do that you will try to see the vertices that are connected to E in this case if they were C and A and you will change their values based on the sum of the edges that connect E to A and C if the value of A is greater than the sum of the edges that connect E to A then you will change the value of A to the value of the sum of the edges that connect E and A and then we did the same process again until we connected A to B and then we connected B to a vertex that has the smallest value in that case it was D and then we connected D to F and when we did that we didn't have any vertices left in the unvisited set all of them were in the visited set and by that time we found the shortest path that connected E to F and it was from E to C to A to B to D to F I hope I made of finding the shortest path using Dijkstra's algorithm clear. So to loop back in, the idea of the shortest path problem is finding the shortest path between two vertices such that the sum of the weights of the edges in the path is minimum. And with this we come to the end of this lecture.